Hi, my name is Andy Spoon. In this video, we're going to take a look at getting started with Pasco Capstone software. I'm also going to be using the 850 Universal Interface connected to our Passport Motion Sensor, which uh, hanging above is a spring with a mass that's going to be oscillating. Now to confirm what I have connected here to my Pasco Capstone software, I'm going to begin by taking a look at my tools palette and opening up the hardware setup. This is found down the left hand side of your screen at the top of the tools. You'll see that I have the 850 connected, showing all the ports available. And you'll see that port number four is connected to my motion sensor, which is confirmed by this green line connecting them. I can quickly dismiss the hardware setup just by clicking on it again. Now let's start getting ready for data collection. I'm going to begin by selecting one of the quick start templates. I'm going to choose the table and graph template. And I'm going to go ahead and select my measurements for these columns. So I'm going to put position and velocity in my table and I'm going to select position for my graph measurement. Now we can begin recording by selecting the record button in the lower left hand corner. Let's go ahead and oscillate our spring. You'll see that we have live data collection going on in our table and our graph and we can further zoom in on our graph by selecting the scale button in the toolbar. Notice that our graph also is scaling the time axis to make sure that all the data is visible. So let's go ahead and stop recording. And now I'm going to make a full page graph, which will allow me to add a couple plot areas and also allow me to dismiss the table, which I'm not really using right now. So let's insert a new page by clicking on the Add New Page button. And instead of choosing one of the templates for this one, I'm going to double click the graph button in my displays palette. This creates a full screen graph where I can select my measurements and I'm going to begin with position and add a couple other plot areas for velocity and acceleration. And once again, I can scale all those at the same time. Notice right now I have run number one showing. Let's go ahead and see what happens whenever I start recording run number two. You'll see that the default behavior is to hide run number one and only show you one run at a time, which in this case is the most recent run number two. Let's stop recording, go back into our toolbar, and you'll see the Run Display Options button has a drop down beside it. This shows me all the runs that are currently available, and you'll see run number two is checked, but I can quickly select run number one to take a look at it. Now let's say we want to look at both of the runs at the same time. The Run Display button also is a toggle for that behavior, so now I can go through and select more than one run. So I see run number one and run number two. And let's go ahead and collect run number three to see what happens. And now you see both my two previously recorded runs and run number three. And let's go ahead and stop recording. So just to confirm that this graph is not just showing me my, my runs, I can also see what all my runs and measurements are available via my data summary, which is the next button found in my tools palette. Here you'll see that I have a motion sensor connected, which has position, velocity, and acceleration data available. And I have three runs for each one of those. Now let's pin that to our screen by clicking on the pin in the upper right hand corner of that box and delete the last run. Now notice when we deleted that run, it removed it both from our graph and also from our data summary. You may have also noticed that we didn't get a confirmation dialog asking us if we really were sure that we wanted to delete that run. And that's because Capstone has the ability to undo all actions, including the deletion of runs. So let's go ahead and hit that undo button. And now you see you have run number three reappear in your graph and back inside of your sensor data summary. I can dismiss the data summary just by selecting it again in the tools palette. So for this last step, I want to go through and customize my graph so I can present it to my teacher. So let's go ahead and uncheck run number one and run number two. Just zoom in on run number three. I'm also going to go ahead and turn off my title, which is shown by default here in the lower left hand corner. I can do that by selecting my graph display properties. And notice this is also where you will have other further control in your graph display options, such as your active data appearances, your future data appearance, the display background options, the display appearance. Notice that my show title is currently checked. That's the default behavior. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that 
and confirm that with the OK button and you'll see that the graph title is no longer being shown. In my last step, I'm going to take a look at how to smooth out some of our data. And let's take a further look at what I currently have. So in my position plot area, I have my position data for run number three. Velocity is the first derivative of that position data, and it looks fairly smooth. Acceleration is my second derivative of that data, and we're starting to see that it doesn't look very smooth at all. Well, Capstone introduces the ability to quickly access the smoothing of that data. So just confirming that you have that plot area selected and that data selected, we can go up into the toolbar and slide it, and you'll see very quickly with just a little bit of the movement of that slider, we're able to slide our data. And this can be done individually for each one of my plot areas, so I can also do this for my velocity. So that's how we can finally customize our displays so we can present them later on. Thanks for joining us in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.